Now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, APECGO.com. Joining us now, the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com, Travis Stewart. How you doing, Travis? I am wonderful. I am wonderful. How are you? Doing great. Beautiful day today. Got to ask you, first of all, about the death of defense in the Big 12. Uh, <laughs> maybe it died several years ago, but it certainly, I, I think it get, took another knife to the heart over the weekend. Uh, Geno Smith puts up these incredible numbers against Baylor uh, last weekend, 70-63 to 63 the win. He's got 656 yards passing. He, he, what, misses six passes all day long, hasn't thrown an interception all year. But... Are those numbers hollow when they come against a Baylor defense that played like that one did on Saturday? Man, I tell you what, you have a you have a good trick of asking me the same questions that everyone seems to ask me all week. You know what the big topics are, and this has been definitely a question I've been pummeled with this week, and all I can tell you is I have not seen a game like that maybe ever where, where both, but especially one defense, just, I mean, flat out blew so many assignments. I mean, it's, it's one thing. I thought you were going to say just flat out blue and stop there. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's one thing if you are trumped by superior offense. I think we see that all the time. That happens all the time. Mm-hmm. It's another if, if you simply make a dizzying array of mistakes that lead directly to touchdowns like Baylor and West Virginia did at times, but especially Baylor in that game. Now, it's partially exacerbated by the fact that there's no doubt that there's at least five wide receivers on that field between those two teams, probably six, that are going to be NFL guys. That's not helping. It's also not helping that both teams kept answering touchdowns so quickly that the that both teams were left with no other option but to continue to pass, to continue to put their foot on the pedal to the metal. So it was going to be intense all the way, but that was definitely a saddening display of, of where some, some of the country stands defensively in this football era. It was... It was painful to watch at times. I was going to ask, do you like those kind of games? No, hate them. I, I, I don't mind a game that's 45 to 42 if it is truly a case of superior offense, which, I mean, we see that all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was, when we were talking about the Vince Young teams back in 2005 here in the office, we were talking about that team. Even the TCU Rose Bowl team that year was obviously very gifted. Some of Robert Griffin's games last year was, I mean, very gifted. But there's a difference between that and just, and just not playing good defense at all. And that's what we really saw in that Baylor-West Virginia game. I mean, several times where a wide receiver would be on a fly or a wheel in the corner, clearly thought he had safety help over the top. The safety was sucking into the middle of the field on God only knows what. And then he goes right up the sideline for a, for a big play, broken touchdown. I, I can't stomach those. I know some people, they just want to see points as much as they can. I don't want to necessarily go back to the wing tee for any means, but... If, if I'm going to see big offense, I want to see good offense, not just deplorable defense. Yeah, you want to see something that feels like it's been a real accomplishment that you've been tested, but that thing the other day, it looked like a video game. <clears throat> it, it was pretty bad. Like, when I say superior offense, I think of the throw that Robert Griffin made to beat Oklahoma. Now, I know there was a corner underneath that route. He was a little too far in, so it's a slight busted coverage. But in the end, Robert Griffin still put that throw in a box about the size that you could fit a dozen donuts in. So, I mean, that was a true case of superior offense beating gifted defense. I didn't see a whole lot of those in Baylor, West Virginia. I saw a whole lot of, I mean, walking into the end zone, looking around, going, I mean, are they only playing nine men out here? Like, what's going on? How could I be this open? So, it was definitely painful. All right. So, now West Virginia goes up against a team that uh, has a better defense than Baylor's. Uh, Texas is not necessarily that great on defense. It's kind of surprising because I thought they'd have a good defense this year, but uh, they gave up a lot of points to Oklahoma State and had to fight to get out of there alive at Stillwater over the weekend. Well, the biggest change between Baylor and Texas defensively, and I agree that, that Texas definitely had some defensive problems, some of which they look like they're addressing by making changes at safety with Adrian Phillips, but the biggest shift between Baylor and Texas is that Texas, in their base, let's say they rush four in base, they can get to you in base by rushing four. Baylor sent three at Geno pretty much all day last week and got flattened. I mean, they never even they never even got close to that kid. They got him once or twice, but for the most part, he had all day to throw on almost, what was it, 50 dropbacks. Texas, with their, with their complement of defensive ends between Alex Okafor and Jackson Jeffcoat, they're going to get to you. And they'll probably, if you drop back 50 times, 
they'll probably either sack you or put a hit on you close to 10. And that's enough to disrupt an offense. That's one to drive. And that can put, if you're West Virginia, that can put you behind the chains and make you pay. They've also got the best cover corner that would have been on Baylor or West Virginia's teams, and that's probably Condre Diggs, who's had a very good season today. They just need Carrington Bynum on the flip side to make up some of the flack. So the biggest thing in the spread is if you can rush a passer uh, and make him uncomfortable, then you can get a, you can get an offense off its tracks. And I think Texas, at the very least, can do that. They may West Virginia may still score forty, but they won't score seventy. I wouldn't think. Now, uh, David Ash stepped up and uh, proved he can play pretty good quarterback. You know, the biggest thing I saw of the Texas Oklahoma State game surrounding David Ash was in the post game after they had won, and on that crucial, I mean, it was the it was the play of the game, the fourth down play on mm-hmm. Texas's last drive that he completed to DJ Grant. In the press conference afterwards, he was asked about it, and he said, that was not the coverage I was expecting, and so I had to make an adjustment. Mm. That is when you all of a sudden can be a game-winning quarterback. Last year, that would have been an incompletion, an interception, a sack, whatever. Now David Ash appears, at least at that point, and hopefully from this point on, appears to be at the point where he can read a defense, make an adjustment, and still make a play, and that was a great play. That was a very difficult throw that he made, and obviously a great conversion by D.J. Grant. So if he's turned that corner, then all of a sudden Texas has more than a bus driver. they got a guy who can build the bus, drive the bus, park the bus, and fuel the bus for you. He can do a lot more now. <laughs> all right, so how do you see this game coming out this weekend? You know, we originally picked Texas to beat West Virginia in the Summer Magazine because we thought that that Texas secondary, one of the best in the country, we thought at the time, was going to be one of the few that were well-equipped to slow down West Virginia when you pair them up with those great defensive ends. I still feel that way about some things. I feel like Carrington Biden has come back to earth a little bit. Maybe teams aren't are just picking on him right now. Uh, and obviously the other safety spot alongside Kenny Vaccaro has not been great. But Condre Diggs and the defensive ends are still known commodities. I still think Texas can win, but it won't be all on a defense like I originally thought it would. I thought Texas could maybe win that game 27 to 26. Now I think that David Ash and the run game is going to have to play well. I think they can win something on the lines of maybe 40 to 37, somewhere mm. in that range. And if West Virginia wins this ball game, you just about box that Heisman Trophy up and give it to Geno Smith now, don't you? I mean, he's at least going to be in the conversation. Now, anything could still happen. And, I mean, we have definitely seen Heisman candidacies fade in a heartbeat. I mean, Jerry Robinson a couple years ago through four or five games looked like the de facto choice and ended up flaring out. You know, Landry Jones last year, once Ryan Broyles went down, he didn't throw another touchdown pass the rest of the year. So things can change in a heartbeat, but, I mean, with the performance that Geno put on against, against Baylor, and if he can come out there and, and dominate Texas in that same list, I mean, he's going to be a, he's going to be a pretty substantial front runner, and he should. He's really talented, and the kid is a ruthless perfectionist. He works really hard. How closely should we be watching the Texas Tech Oklahoma game this weekend? Extremely, because I, I asked Don Williams, the beat writer for Texas Tech at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal, I asked him about this last night. I said Oklahoma seems to have a, a great struggle with Texas Tech. Tech's beaten them four out of seven times now. Is it a, is it just hoodoo voodoo? Or is this schematic? And he rightfully pointed out, well, they've had a coaching change, so it can't necessarily be schematic. When you go up to Texas Tech, you know, the tortillas are flying and everything. That's a really tough place to play. To play. And the, the deep, dirty secret for Oklahoma right now is as highly regarded as most of those kids were on their roster as recruits. None of them are really producing. It's not a very good offense right now. And the offensive line, definitely not very good. I'll be honest with you. I'm picking Texas Tech to win. Wow. I know that Oklahoma is going to come out things bared, and they're they're going to be mad as hell, and they're going to come out looking to beat them after what happened last year. But I got to be honest, I think Texas will win. Wow. That's a, that's huge, and that would be huge for Tommy Tuberville. He needs a win oh. like that. Yes, that would be monstrous for him. And, and Tech made leaps and bounds of improvement this year over last year, but this would be the first real opportunity improving ground because. Seth Dagey played a shaky first half against Iowa State last week. If he does that against Oklahoma, they'll probably lose. So this will be a good opportunity for, for Tuberville to prove, hey, offensively and defensively we are back, and for Seth Dagey to prove, hey, I am a legitimate top-10 quarterback in the country. All right, we'll turn to high school real quickly. I just want to get your thoughts on that uh, ridiculous uh, four-overtime game that Lufkin beat uh, college, uh, A&M Consolidated in uh, this past weekend after you saw him get uh, housed by Longview the week before. Yeah, and then Longview got housed by Mesquite. Yeah. Right, and Lufkin beat A&M Consolidated. So a weird turn of events. I think it showed a lot of guts. 
from Lufkin. And I realize that's intangible, and it would be more fun to give a bunch of statistics, and I could if I went with quarterback Tyler Stubblefield for Lufkin, who was great. But I think that more than anything just showed a lot of guts. And I think that speaks highly of Todd Quick to go out there and win that game after that colossal emotional letdown against Longview. I mean, they got pummeled, and it didn't look good from almost any standpoint. Then they came out and not only played a really good game against a really good team, but they took it deep. I mean, four overtimes, they kept battling, they kept throwing the football. It was really impressive. And I, and I don't want to overstate or gush on anything. And, again, I hate speaking in intangible sometimes, but you really got to give the kids a lot of credit for buckling down and getting a win when, I mean, I think a lot of teams probably would have folded after what had happened to them the week before. Where are you guys going to be this week? Battle of the Axe, baby. North Texas, Denison and Sherman, a 100-plus-year-old <laughs> rivalry. It looks bad on paper because Denison's over so far and Sherman's pretty good, but I mean, there's going to be 10,000 people there. It's going to be standing room only, and you know, I mean, you just know there's no way anyone's getting out of this one easily. It's going to be tougher than people think. You need to uh, do some kind of a wild card thing and make plans to come to the John Tyler White House game. I'm just telling you. Uh, yeah, we need, like the NFL, we yes. need to continue to argue for flex scheduling. But uh, <laughs> I don't think we've ever been a- enabled to have flex scheduling. And even even sometimes when we have a bad game or two bad teams or what have you, it still gives us an opportunity to highlight ISDs and kids that may deserve it. So sure. we stick to our guns, but we will definitely have someone at White House John Tyler enjoying the fireworks in that one. Because I'm guessing by week 10 or week 11 or whatever week it's going to be, you know, that, that thing's going to be a war. It looks like it's shaping up that way anyway, so... There's a good chance it'll be 10-0 and versus 9-1, and and could, that's about as good as it gets. Could very well be. Hey, thanks very much, Travis. Again, uh, check out the TexasFootball.com. And, uh, Travis, what else is coming up on the uh, website very quickly? Well, we're pretty we're pretty tame this week. We're going to turn all of our attention to the Battle of the Axe and hope we can survive another week of crazy high school football. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck for you there, man. <laughs> hey, thanks, thank, thanks very much for coming on. We appreciate it. Good talking to you, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. See you All there. Right. Travis Stewart from Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.